So, uh, welcome along to Point Blank, um, all you guys here in the studio and everybody at home on a live stream. Uh, today we've got drum and bass producer Extra uh, here to talk to you guys through some of his productions uh, and his workflow in Logic. Um, so yeah, let's get into it and uh, welcome along Extra. Cheers, thank you. Cheers. So uh, I was thinking first of all what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play you a little clip of the tune that... Uh, I want to break down, it's just come out on Symmetry Recordings called Cyrax. Um, then after that I'm going to just break down the elements to you, explain what I've done inside it, um, show you the single parts on their own and uh, yeah, just, just let you know what I've done basically. So here, here you go. So yeah, basically, um, I'll start with the, the kind of atmospheric kind of side of things. Um, I like to try and get these down first normally, along with a beat, just so you've got something to work off of and uh, start adding to. So there's like the pad here. <coughs> I think this was out of... Um, out of a film, like just some sort of atmospheric vibes from the background of a film, and you just loop it up. You can kind of hear it when it's played on its own. You can hear it kind of looping parts of it. Um, there you go, there's the start of it again. So, and then added like a little cat sound, as I've called it, to it. Sounds like a cat to me, so called it a cat. Um, and uh, it's just like a little bell kind of hit. I just think when you're building up ambience, it's nice to just have all these things that work together um, just to kind of add more su suspense, and I suppose. And um, yeah, that they are all out of. Uh, I think that the cat thing was out of a sample pack, to be honest. The ambient hit thing is out of FMA, I think that was out of FMA. So you just just bounced it out of FMA, um, put it in there, obviously try and get it in key, mess around with things, just, just make them work. And uh, yeah, there's some other stuff here, like a little reversed breath, I suppose. 
when it's played in with it, everything else. The groove kind of, um, then there's like an interference thing that comes in. And that's just like obviously a sample of a vinyl or the beginning of a vinyl scratch. Um, uh, what else is there in there? Sounds like some sort of background from the CIA along with a rave horn. Uh, it, that's what it reminded me of anyway. So it just adds like an app, sort of like a ravey sound in the background. Reminds me of a rave horn kind of. Gives it a nice feeling. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the ambience side of things. Obviously, when the interference, just like a little hit, also adds to the break, like a little bit of dirt on the on the beginning of the break. Sounds a bit more authentic. Um, I'll move on to the actual break now as it goes, just to show you what I've done with that. So just a standard hi-hat for the intro. I seem to do that quite a lot, start with a hi-hat, just it's a bit more DJ friendly if you've got something there for the DJs to actually mix to rather than just having like a load of ambience with no, you know, nothing to keep your beats matched with. Um, so yeah, it's just that for 16 bars, and then old funk break in that. And then it, obviously you can see the transition is, it's louder on the 33rd bar, that's because the kick and the snare come in. And you always want, you don't want to just, when you're making a tune, you don't want it to all just be the same volume the whole way through because you won't have any dynamics, it won't be interesting in the slightest. So you want to try and give it a bit of variation <coughs> in um, volume and stuff. And even panning, all sorts of stuff, just to keep it interesting. Even if you can't really hear it subliminally to people, it will make a big difference in their, in their head. Um, so yeah, that's just where it all comes in together. Got a, a high kick. That's, that's the lower sort of boomy side of it, I suppose. And that's got more tops to it when you add them together. It's a bit more like a hip hop kick, I suppose with the snare, um, it's quite a tonal snare. I think there was about five layers to it. Um, if you look on the, if you get an EQ up and have a look. <coughs> Analyzer, you can see, it's like the little, that, that's the little tonal part of the snare there take that out, it doesn't sound as punchy and stuff. <coughs> but it's um, always good to go through your drum hits as well and all, all sorts of sounds and see if there's any bad frequencies in within there. So if you're going up and you hear something that's really poking out, just take it down. Um, because you're creating this sound, you know what it sounded like before I just done that. But if you're sitting in the studio and you've made a tune and you send it out, people don't know what the original sound sounded like. You're taking all the bad frequencies out and people haven't got the sort of idea of the sound before you've done that kind of thing to it. So they just hear it as, as, as a sound, any other sound, you know. When you see yourself doing that, you you know what you've done to it. Other people don't know, so you know that's a horrible sounding frequency there. There's a few horrible ones in there. Anything that's going to be like hurting people's ears and stuff when it's played really loud, because you've got to remember this is going to be played in a club as well. So 
when you hear frequencies like that, it's always best to take them out, and that's the best way of testing. There's better EQs than the ones in Logic. I'd recommend like the Fab Filter EQs. You can do about 20 or 30 of these peaks and just clean up your sounds a lot more um, than the ones on here. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't make, t it's made a big difference now to us because we heard the original, but you know, if you'd never heard that snare before, you wouldn't know the difference really, to be honest. There's no difference at all, you know? But when it's played really loud, and you've got those horrible frequencies in there, you know, it's going to hurt people's ears. So it's best to always sweep through and test for bad frequencies. Um, yeah, back to the fill. I mean, back to the break, sorry. That's... Um, I can't remember the name of the original break now, but it's an old funk break uh, added with a couple of other uh, extra fills in there, what I'd done, um, and then bounced it out. There's probably about four layers to it. And then I like to um, sort of create a funky break first, give it the groove, then move on giving it the bigger, punchier drums. To, and then after you've, if you get the right groove in your break first, you can always write something to it rather than, you know, if you've got, a, if you haven't got the right groove in your drum br uh, beat, it's seriously hard to write a good bass line to it. If you get the beats right first, you know, it, it's quite, it's almost a natural progression to write a good bass line to it. So the beats are the most important thing for me in my production. Um, without, yeah, without a doubt, I have to get the beats right. You ca I can't make anything without good beats, basically. Um, there's, a couple of, there's, there's a couple of rides that come in at 65 bars as well and a bit of shuffle that comes in on the drop so I'll go through that as well it's pretty basic stuff I think this is the the shuffle from I think it's Funky Drummer the Funky Drummer Lou so it just gives it a little bit of speed for the drop like a little just sort of gritty kind of shuffle that I, li I like to have behind <coughs> a main one so it adds a bit of dirt um, to the main one you'll hear the difference so you've got like I think this is like a pitch down overdriven one of this so this is the original um, and this is Oh right, no, that's a different shaker, but it just adds some sort of grit to it, rather than it being all clean and nice, some clashing frequencies and stuff like that. <coughs> Sometimes it's not all about cleanness, it's about giving it the authenticity of being dirty and, you know, not too clean, especially in a tune like this, with, the, with that kind of beat. So yeah, that's the, uh, the shuffle. got a couple of nice little rides in there as well just pokey little high frequency just keeps it interesting when when the bass stops to fill it with something you don't always want bass to fill out you know you can do questions and answers with bass lines or you can do it with drums and fills and stuff like that and that's that's what I'm sort of getting more into now is stripping back the bass and bring in more groove and like, you know, more bandy. You know, when you see like a band playing, the drummer always has a big part to say in it, you know, whether or not you you think, or you know, you'll, you'll listen and you'll hear certain hits are like answering to what another person in the band is doing. So I think it's, <coughs> it's good to get things like that in your tunes, just keep it interesting and not too samey basically. So it's, you hear the... <laughs> Just that little one right there just before it comes in.
This is, this is the little um, shuffle that I've done with a ride and a bit of delay, I think, and the shuffle layered together. So, just adds a lot to the snare. Difference is amazing, isn't it? Just one little sound, you know, fills it out so much. Um, these little rides here as well. Just like again, question and answers. So it's all about like the question and answers thing again. Just adding another element. And it's the complete opposite end of the frequency spectrum. So you've got a bass underneath, then you've got a high frequency doing something. Could Some people might say, oh, I wouldn't do it like that. But, you know, I think it keeps it interesting. Myself, my, my taste, you know, not, it might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I like to do things like that. So yeah, as you get further in, I bring in more sort of toppy drums. Uh, these are all of them together. It's more like faster pace rides. Without that in there, it just sounds dead, you know? It doesn't feel like there's any life in it. Um, it's just quite a dead, dull beat. So, yeah, adding that is definitely something you need to be thinking about. And it's all about the, the way that you do it as well. Um, you know, getting the right hits together and stuff is quite a big, you know, this, that one's really toppy. This one's really toppy, you'll see. If I show you the frequency. Oh, where's that, that's the output. Yeah, so it's actually a bit too toppy. You'd probably roll it off around there, around 14,000 or something. Um, and then this one will be a little bit duller and just add a bit more body to the hit. See, it's around, mainly around between two and five. And this one's five and above, I suppose. Yeah. But together they work. Not really clashing, you can hear them both clearly. Um, yeah, so. Taken, I've taken these out here um, just because I'll, I'll demonstrate to you if you put them back in with the other brake that's just come in because the other brake's got quite busy top end it will just get really muddy same as you can get kick in a bass that don't match you can get hi-hats and you know higher frequencies that don't match so you've got to be careful of you know what you're adding and that's all over really, you know, it, w the same rules apply, you just got to make sure you're not making it too muddy and it's working. If you, if you play it together, I'm sure it'll... Be so, can you hear it? It's really muddy, really horrible, um, just not nice at all. So.
completely clashing. So you want to you want to try and keep everything just sticking out. Every sound has the count, basically. That's what I try and do. I try and make every sound sort of have its place when I'm making the tune. Um, you don't you don't need too many things in the same part of the song. So you know, like you're gonna if you're gonna use you wouldn't use like two basses over each other, so you can't use too many sort of stuff. You got to keep it clean. Um, with the sub basses, these were made on uh, EFM one. I play them on their own to you first, which is a a, lo a Logic plugin. That's why I wanted to break this down to you guys because I didn't want to start coming here and getting all you know. Oh, I use this and that. You you can make good music with just the Logic standard Logic plugins, and um, these are the results. Like it's just the low here. Now. So yeah, and I've I've actually done the uh, the channel strips here. Um, Anyway, basically, these were all made on EFM one. Um, so in um, yeah, they're just the sub basses, and then I made I, I used the same sound again, put it through to a different bus, and distorted the tops of it. So you've got like a distorted version that goes over the top of it and you mix them together until they sound right. So it sounds nice like that. But if you listen to them on their own, each one on their own doesn't really sound all that, you know. It sounds like any old sound, you know. It's nothing special. And the um, same goes for the, the low end of it. It's just pretty... And then when you mix them together, makes a big difference. Um, the distortion I used, I couldn't, I couldn't demonstrate to you because I don't have it on this computer, but it's called Camel Fat. Um, it's a third party plugin made by Camel Audio. Really good for just being random. Um, it's got a randomized button. It's got two distortions and a filter. That's literally all it is. You press randomize and it does all sorts of LFOs and uh, distortions. So, yeah, that's uh, that's a really good tool. I'd recommend it. I think it's a free plugin as well. I'm not too sure on that. I know they do a, a few other free plugins. Um, so, yeah, this is like the Reese that I made to go in here, it was made on Reactor, on an uh, ensemble called Dragon. I think Pendulum used to use it in their early work. You can, it's quite Pendulum-y. Um, it's j basically just, the, the early version of it, the one that I made this on, was just a Reese bass that played. Um, and you could just play it on your keyboard and it would be like, sort of gliding Reese bass. I just sampled a load of it. Um, bounced it out and this was a, a chunk of it that I took out and then I put a reverb, I automated the reverb on the tail of this sound. Um, I've, sh I've got the thing here so I'm going to show you what it is that I've done, but this is the sound I'm talking about. So as you can hear like the reverb's really long, the, the sound actually stops quite a long time before the reverb does, just gives it a nice effect. <laughs> kind of works really well with the ambience of the intro as well. Um, there's, there's two versions of it. There's the one where 
it's just cut and then there's the one when it goes into the drop. It has like a little, has like a, a sort of, I don't know, a different kind of, can you hear like the, the bit before it, it, instead of just going, uh, it goes, uh, uh, it's like it gives it a bit of suspense before the drop, I suppose. Um, like an indication that something different's happening, you know, it's all about doing different things, not being, not doing the same thing over and over again throughout the tune, as I've been explaining. <laughs> But, um, right, so where's this thing? Reactor. Um, MIDI keyboard doesn't, the MIDI doesn't seem to be receiving any messages. Would you? Um, basically, this is the, the thing here. Great. Oh no. <laughs> Perfect. You bought the other song, but in that don't Take away that. Take tab off, not. Yeah, it's stuck. That thing's stuck there, isn't it? So. Oh, on that. <laughs> Let me click nothing. Oh, there you go. Right. Um, <laughs> doesn't seem to be loading the ensemble, but this is the sound. Right. I have got a plan for you, but this is this is the sound that I made out of it. There's clearly a wave there, so I don't know why it's not playing. <sighs> Uh, well, that's the wave of the sound. For some reason, it's not playing. Um, that's the wave of the sound there. I've put it into the EXS instrument um, by you load up the EXS, you go to edit, and then if you've got a bounced out sound like that, you can literally just drag it from there and into there, which is exactly what I've done um, with this. This is kind of the same sound. It wasn't exactly the same sound, but it's the same reverb, which is the reactor reverb called Space Master. It's quite different. You can do really random stuff with it, get some really good results. And yeah, so I've done that, loaded it in. I've put legato on it. So instead of going doing two notes when you press it, so it won't go uh uh, it will roll into it, and you put a bit of glide here. So um, and then you can just automate the actual. I think I've done the automation in here already. Yeah. So if I play this sound, it's kind of the same. Okay, and then take that off. Right, I've got to wait for that to finish, but you'll you'll hear it automates into it. it just gives it something completely different. Takes like turns that standard sound into you know something mental. Um, so basically, how I would create a bass out of this would be. On the EXS, turn that into filter cutoff. So you're you're controlling the cutoff now with this LFO here, and these are the waves. So this one, if you had it on there, it would be as if you're going from you know if you leave your cutoff down here. It's this is the speed, this is how much, and this is what you're controlling. So. Let's have a listen now. Uh, that's a little bit wrong. So I'm going to take that down a bit. So 
So if you get down to the it's quite a nice sound. So what you can add to that is some distortion. Overdrive I like because it adds more harmonics to the sound. Um, so you're driving the sound. And you can also use this as a cutoff, which I like to do. So So yeah, I want to create a little bass line. I've made another beat for you, just so I can show you what sort of elements as well go, go into different beats that makes that one's a bit samey. So I've made another little funky thing here. I've got them all in uh, bounce down and stuff. So you've got hi-hat. So yeah, this is just some um, random beats that I made. Here. It's actually a little bit out. I think it's one seven four, uh, one seven two. Sorry. So the hat's quite loud in there. Stuff. I've also got this break as well, which is made out of several elements, including the funky, I mean, sorry, the worm hole break. Do you know, um, I've got the original here with me as well, but I made, this is what I made the, the beat from. Um, this is the original of it. You you will probably recognise it. So the quickest way I would make a break out of that is to use the speed section in the flexi time mode, and that's almost as if you were playing it on uh, a deck and you just speed the thing up instead of having to actually chop it up and you know pitch it up like that, where you lose you lose some qualities doing it like that. I think like this, you pitch up, but but it's quick and it's easy and that's what it's about. You don't want to take ages doing on, you know, boring yourself to death. You want to get something down, get the whole idea down and then you start doing the boring stuff with mixing it down and stuff like that. So, <coughs> that with this might work. Let's have a little go. Right, so you've got a little break going now. Um, wait, let's turn that off read for a second. <laughs> like you know you've got an idea down already so then you just grab some ambience downs start working it in looking for vocals or whatever you know whatever you you'd like in there um. sorry um. Let's just get that in there quickly. <laughs> so it is like basics of uh, getting an idea down that's how I would start I'd get the beats done as I said then um, start adding your elements basically 
Is there anything, any questions you want to know about anything at the minute? Um, anything that you're not sure about or anyone got anything they want to ask? Yeah, there's, um, there's a couple from the chat room. Yeah. Uh, we've got Ransom. Uh, he wants to know, like, you've bounced uh, in your Cyrex track, you've bounced the audio down. That, that's partly because we don't have all the plugins. Yeah, but yeah, do, pretty, do you yeah. Actually, do you, would you do that for your mix downs anyway? For my last mix down, yeah, always, like, because it's easier to, you know, say if you've coloured them all as well, the same way as I have. Um, let me just get these off again, sorry. Yeah, so they're all coloured and stuff. And I know what's what. So if I want to do automation on the whole bunch of breaks or whatever, you know, it's for for volume and things like that, you can just, it's simple. You just cut it here and here or whatever on the whole lot. Sorry, I should have done it on the lot then. Um, so say if I want to do it on here, I want to do a fade on all of that, basically between there and there, I can just do that, and yeah, pretty much just uh, highlight all them, you know, you can just go up here, fade, and then that's created a fade on all that, you know, rather than having to do it if you've got MIDI and stuff like that. You've got MIDI and all, all sorts of stuff going into it, and you've got effects, then you've got a limiter that's trying to pull up stuff when you're trying to fade it down, and things like that. So you'd always, yeah, you'd always bounce everything into audio and then start working like that. I, I pretty much work 99% audio as it is. So any good basses I make, I bounce it straight out into audio and then start working with it. Because you've got more freedom with that as well. Same way as like how I've just showed you with this bass, you know, you've got you've got one re-space there that's just, or just the wave of it here, and then the, 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 uh, like the possibilities are endless once you've got it in audio. You can put it in a sampler, you can pitch it up with the, the thing I've just shown you in uh, flexi time. There's all sorts of stuff you can do. Yeah, where you've got a MIDI or you've just got massive or something like that open, you can only use massive. You can, you're quite limited to what you've got in there, you know? So, yeah, I'd, to answer your question, I'd always use audio, yeah. Cool, thanks. Um, got one more from um, uh, Jean. Uh, she asks, what are the, which are the reactor plugins that you usually use for a menacing bass line? Um, I don't use much reactor for bass lines, to be honest. Um, it's more for little effects and things. There's some cool little... Um, hold on, I'll just load it up. There's like some cool little things for beats that you can put your samples in and they just mash it up and, and there's also ones with beats in them already um, this is also a wicked plugin actually uh, it's just got loads of sort of fluty atmospheric sounds in it and especially if you send it to that if you send it to that reverb as well that I've set up And another thing is with people that use reverbs and stuff as well, you should always process your <coughs> reverbs and your delays. Because people think, oh, it's just, you know, it's just a plug-in, it's just an effect, you don't really need to do anything to it, but you definitely need to get it in the mix properly, man. You, you, you can't just have some delay that's going on for like, you know, f five seconds after the drop and it's not EQing or doing some sort of transformation or fitting in the mix, you know, it can stand out. You need to make sure that it sounds sounds in the mix like not just another element of of noise and and muddiness you know you need to make sure it's not muddy in your mix and stuff but yeah this is one thing that i i like to use so to answer the question it's it's more of a um, effect tool rather than basses and stuff like that for me anyway i like to make um intros with it and things like that Okay, there's a there's one thing here. Let me just. Uh, I think this is this is good for like house leads and stuff like that. Yeah, but I don't I don't really make that kind of music. But there's a lot of producers that might be into using it. It's all about just experiment with it because there's so many possibilities as well. As you, you know, you can basically make your own synths on it. So. Yeah, um, 
Anything else? Yeah. Anything else you'd like me to sort of show you? Anything that you in your own yeah. production that you might? Um, you say that you don't use uh, Reactor um, for actual bass lines, and you just use it for effects. Yeah. When you're actually using bass lines, what is your main sort of like the virus? Virus, yeah. Virus TI, okay. Yeah. Well, that's um, so that what, what sort of oscillators and stuff like that. Basically, what are your parameters that you use for that sort of sort well, of like, not the Reese kind of size, but the kind of square sort of side, if you know what I mean? Like the subby sort of yeah, mid, yeah, mid range Yeah, 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 the kind of like yeah. the um, ice kind of sounding stuff. Well, to be honest, like I like to I like to find nice presets and then go in on the presets. So I wouldn't make a, I wouldn't make many sounds from scratch because, you know, what's the point? If you can if you can hear a sound and think, right, I can change that to something else rather than what's the point in going, right, I can I could use that or uh, but I'm going to go and spend 2 hours making like one from scratch for no reason. So what I'll do is I'd, I'd go through the presets, find a nice bass sound, then I'd tweak that, <laughs> bounce it out, put it in the emu sampler, and then start messing around with it. Like my, I've been using the emu a lot on bass lines recently, as you'll hear on the next the next thing that's coming out on subtitles. There's like a really bassy <laughs> emu bassy sort of thing coming so out soon. So, so you use modulation. In the virus, or yeah, 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 you do, yeah, in so both. Because, like, like this is a little, um, like, this little sound here was like an LFO on the um, EFM one. And I re I like had a slow LFO, so it's probably going like wow, 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 wow. And then uh, I put it into the EXS sampler and just pitched it up, so it goes like it sounds like a little strangled duck or something. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? Like, <laughs> what, what can you explain that as? Like, and th th it's just things like that. You can't really do that on on a, a, a standard plugin just once, one plugin, like with nothing else. You have to experiment with these things, you know, and you start finding out. All right, like that's how they're doing it, or you know, you, f you stumble upon your own sort of sound and mm. things. Like in a rise, I've got a, a similar sort of sound to that in a rise that everyone's like, they think it's a vocal and stuff. I've had people think saying like. Does it say it's going to get you? And I'm like, no, don't say that. It's <laughs> just a bass line that's pitched up. <laughs> don't start. <laughs> what, what, what? Go on, go on, you're all right. Um, the best thing about this track for me is uh, the shuffle in the beat. And yeah. Sorry, the best thing about this track is the shuffle in the beat and that natural sort of flow you've got. Cheers. So I just wondering personally how you've gone about like creating that shuffle. You know that there sounds like there's some elements yeah. in there that aren't just of one break. And yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, trying definitely. Trying to get like a natural... Well, yeah, it's all about it's starting with loose, the funky, like the f the old funk breaks, man. As as a stepping stone, you start with that to get your idea down, and then you just you just experiment with di different hits. You know, there's lo there's endless amounts of shuffles out Can there. Can you break it down? The shuffle. Or the, yeah, uh, the, the actual the shuffle. Way. I bounced it together, but it's like yeah. yeah, that's it on its own, like. There's a couple of hats in there that I put in there that are just like the pokey little tit. Mm. It's just two hats. And there's a lot of compression on that break. Uh, around when I made this, this is over a year old, this tune. When I made it, I wasn't really using much limiting. This is something that I've just started doing now is I'm, I'm limiting more than I'm compressing now. For some reason, it's just gives you the same kind of dynamics I feel that you get more dynamics by limiting something rather than compressing it because yeah. compressing it just takes the dy dynamics away. Yeah, just taking. Yeah, taking and, and like the limiting just controls anything that's going to go over a certain point. So all under here, you've got all this movement, whereas compression just goes bang and squashes it all, like you know, into a box basically. Yeah, and if you find a good limiter, then it can be quite nice. Exactly, quick, man. Just yeah, well, exactly, man. Cheers, man. No worries, man. So yeah. Um, Back to <coughs> it. One more question. So you spoke a lot about authenticity, yeah. and you mentioned emu samples as well. Yeah. So, like, what advice would you have for like a new producer or myself regarding you know external equipment, hardware, and stuff? Yeah, just um, you know, experiment with it because, and and you know, you'll hear people talking about things, and you'll be like, what is that? You know. 
just experiment, man. That's all you, you know, I can't, it's, it's literally, um, it's not something you, you can be taught, to be honest. It's something you have to teach yourself because your set of ears and your brain works a completely different way to mine. You might hear something and go, that's brilliant. I might hear it and go, that's not all that, you know. Um, so is to there be a honest, big difference a, between something like reason and using an emu sampler? <coughs> yeah, man, yeah, yeah, massive, massive difference. And it, it, the, with the emu, I find that the tones of the bass and, and the, I like to write things in really low keys, man. Um, and if I try doing that on a, a VST, especially in something like Reason, the, the whole tune will just collapse. But if you bounce it into the emu and then you put it back in the computer, somehow it just gives it so much more room. And you're still writing this really low key and the subs are like, you know, rumbling. So you think like sample, resampling from Reason? Resampling from Reason would... I just, what are your thoughts I just, on Reason? I think Reason's just a beginner's sort of... A beginning sort of tool to learn off, but I think you have to move on. Because it, you can't use any third party <laughs> plugins, you're very limited in that way, yeah? And, you know, you've you got to keep up, man. <laughs> There's so much technology out there. If you're going to be using something that's going to limit you to like a standard com computer EQ or, you know, it's not exactly the best tool in the, in the, to in the tool box, basically. No worries, man. No worries. Yeah. Um, just trying to think about the groove side of things is it's, it's a hard thing because these old breaks as well, the way they're recorded, is so um, unique to that era. It's hard to replicate, but I think once you once you take some of the elements and you you incorporate it with the new music, you can replicate it, man. But it's you just have to you just have to um, use the original breaks, I suppose, or layer them in at least. Yeah. You're right, man. Um, oh, <laughs> Easy, right. What's happening, Barry? Um, Amy Sampler, have you got any good tips for the filtering techniques on, on the Amy Sampler? It's pretty simple, man. If you know how to do it, it's, uh, it took me ages because there wasn't any videos really on no, the no, internet. No, no, I can't right. find anything that yeah. actually teaches you how to use the Emu. I mean, there's all sorts of people like making, like TB, for, for example, made like I think he made his first album on an emu sampler and I'm That's like I don't even know how to make a beat in an emu yeah, sampler right. <laughs> all I use it for is literally the Z plane filters and sure. I run that out of out of the emu into a Mackie desk back into your sound card so you've automatically got the 98 um, sound like for your basses and stuff using the general MIDI um, for the automation and stuff for the filters or are you controlling it via the emu no system? I just do it with the little <laughs> the, the little, little yeah, yeah, yeah. The the uh, the wheel of God, I suppose. I suppose yeah, it. like that's. Um, it's pretty loose, though. Isn't it? Yeah, but that's the great it's thing about yeah. it. It is loose, so you get you get sort of results that you wouldn't get. Otherwise, yeah. You know, you wouldn't get doing it on a on a a time coded computer that's like yeah. so tight and mechanical. You, that's the yeah. best bit about it because you just scroll through and you mess around and you find something and you're like. I wouldn't have done that, but that sounds great. I'm going to put that in there, you know? Yeah, That's I find that like you're kind of limited almost to how much, <laughs> uh, like, you know, your rates and stuff like that. They don't actually go to a point yeah, where you get no, a rate totally. calculator up yeah. and work out the exact rate for the BPM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, the, that's the thing. Like, I'm really spontaneous and random when I make tunes, man. I'll hear a sound and just whack it straight in there. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I, I won't, like... I don't think, right, I want that sound in there. Um, this is how it's got a sound. I'll try things, and, and if I hear a sound, I'll make it work. If I want it in there, I'll make it work. I'll pitch it up, pitch it down, get it in key, like, perfect it. Somehow it's going in the tune if I want it in there. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Um, cool, some people, like, go in the studio with a set idea, but I think that's going <coughs> to... It's, it's kind of good in a way, but I don't always have a set idea. But it, it's good to have a rough idea, I suppose, yeah, of yeah. what you want, <laughs> but then like to add all the elements and stuff. You can't, you can't plan that, I don't no, think. I you can't plan like what sort of effects you're going to use. Well, you you might know, don't go in there and go, right. Well, I always find that I don't really think of things that I actually... No, know, you just hear it, it's don't you? Like make it and yeah, like, exactly. Oh, right, yeah, 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 exactly. Never even thought of that. Exactly, like, man. That's so definitely yeah. the way it is, man. Um, yeah, pretty much. That's that's um, that's how I work as well, man. So yeah, um, anything right? With I'll, I'll go through this break a little bit more. There's, there's this is as I said, it's from the original break that I played you. So it's all made from this, and then that's like the famous Ed Rush and Optical 
beat. They they used to use that back in like uh, wormhole days and stuff. But I I added loads of little vocals and just to try and make it a bit more authentic. As I say, adding like you know like James Brown used to go like you know I'm not going to start doing it, but you know what he used to do. Ain't it funky? No, you know. <laughs> no, but like yeah, just just little. Just like a little. Oh, it's not even in that bit. Yeah. Just in in the top there. So it's like you know, it don't really. I I don't know if it makes a difference, but to me it does. You know, to other people it might they might just go, "What have you done?" Like, but I think it's <coughs> trying to keep the authenticity in in it is a big thing for me, especially in beats. With, with basses and stuff, you know, you experiment with beats. I think you have to make it sound like a drum kit, otherwise you're gonna sound like you're using pots and pans for your drums and stuff, and that's not the one. Well, it depends what you're going for, but yeah, pretty much. Um, I would like to show you how I made these on the plugins, but for some reason, it won't let me. Yeah, you ah, oh. oh, right, 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 yeah, it's, it's working now, so. Right, that's one of the bases. Um. Right, I think that's the the main sort of sub. As you can see, that that camel fat there is like out, but that's the thing that I got the tops with. But this is the plugin I used. <laughs> You know, you can automate all that, and it's like it's just a standard Logic plugin, but it's brilliant from, you know, for those sort of. I don't know if anyone knows of Wilkinson, but he, he makes a lot of these sounding bass lines as well. Like, but I know he uses the EXS a lot, but it's it's just so easy to use. There's just like the envelope for the modulation and the cutoff filter. It's got massive sub too. Yeah, it's got sick, and it sounds ridiculous in a club, like really good. What the what the stereo detune thing? No, this is a mono plugin. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, they go to one bus, pads, effects, and stuff like that. Um, do any of you know, do you know how to create like auxiliary channels? Um, I, might, I might just do one just because the people on the internet might know. So what I'll do with all these is solo them. Okay, go on there. Find them, wherever they are. Where the hell are they? Right, I can't find them on the actual window. Uh, what? <coughs> Why are they not soloed on there? Um, right, well anyway, I'll just do it one by one. So what I'll do is just put it all into, say, 25. Let's just do it with that for now. Okay, so that's, oh no, that's not gonna be enough. All right, so you've got the break in there. Let's just get the kick in there as well. Normally, I'd, I like to leave the kick and the snare sort of to their own and use the hats and brakes and stuff in one bus and the kick in one bus and the snare in one bus because I think if you're putting everything into one it gets a bit muddy and stuff and you can process it better like that that's just my opinion a lot of people like to put their um, everything into one in nah. nah nah never uh, like I know I know some people do but I hate that I, I think you know if you're listening to a band or you're listening to like funky drummer do you think they had it in like when you're listening to them live 
you know it wasn't in mono you don't hear it going <laughs> straight down the middle you know it's <laughs> everywhere it's like you want to create that feel of an actual song like I know it's drum and bass but I still want to create a feel of like live drums and the bass is where it should be and the vocals are where they should be and it's like a stereo image it's like a picture it's 3D you know it's not just that's why we got stereo otherwise we'd just make it on one speaker do you know what I mean that's why they're there I think in my opinion some people might disagree highly with me like you, dis you disagree do you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 producers and like who produce bands look at as if they are looking at the band. Yeah. Exactly. The band. Like, that's how I do it. And I, I have my snare slightly over there. I'll have my snare, like, only, only slightly. I'll have my hats, like, a little bit panned, you know. I'll have my kick straight down the middle. I don't know why I do that, to be honest. But I do. That's just my little formula. Um, just like that. There's that pair of pants from... <laughs> pair of pants. <laughs> like, down the bottom, you've got all your bass stuff and everything. Yeah, like yeah, 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 exactly. And, and the tops go out like that. So, and that's what I would do. I was just about to go... No, I'm joking. I was, just <laughs> I was just about to show you uh, what I would do on the bus that it goes to. So say so this is all like the stereo stuff. Um, I would put this, this is my little tool. Stereo spread. So you hear the difference already. It might have already had this on. I'm, I'm assuming it has because I do it nearly all the time. But um, <coughs> you would put like from about, I don't know, say 1,000 up to there. But this is a really good tool to make things stand out in a mix. Um, you don't always have to have it up 100% and stuff. And I know some people are like, oh, it messes with the phase of the sounds and things like that. But I, I think it sounds good. And you know, I haven't had any complaints that my, like, you know, well, your stereo field sounds whack. Like, you know, it hasn't, it hasn't <laughs> happened. So, but it just makes things a bit, a bit wider. And the way you can tell as well on your master, I'll tell you what I, um, I like to have on my master is obviously a limiter, a channel EQ, so you can see, you know, the whole, the whole song as it adds another element. It adds like an, an extra element to your song and analysing it when you can see what's going on. You can see if there's a peak at 500 hertz that you need to find the sound that's got that nasty peak in it, take the peak out, limit it, whatever, you know, make it look right and sound right. If you've got a mix that looks right and sounds right, it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good mix. So, uh, what's that, man? Um, like a lot of drum and bass sounds really like identical these days. Like, all the advice which you need to be put about like originality or thoughts on originality. Um, Sorry, can I just say that, that question? Yeah, no problem, no problem. Keep drum and bass original. Um, um, yeah, so I like don't know. Drum and bass, a lot of it sounds like identical or very unoriginal. Like, what are your thoughts on that? And how do you stop, do you using, stop <laughs> using massive? Stop <laughs> using <laughs> massive, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Octane and DLR sample pack, <laughs> man. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just think that people are doing the same things. They're not like. You know, they're not trying to be different. They're like, oh, that tune goes off, so I want to make something that goes like that, you know? Do you think you have to conform to a certain label sounds, though, to break through? When you're stuff? signed to a label, yeah, but if you're not signed to a label, you know, if you're signed to a label and your label's saying, right, here's 50 grand, make me an album that sounds like this, I want one that sounds like that, one that's like that, we've got vocalists, we, then yeah, you've got to do it because you've signed a contract saying that's what you're going to do. But if you ain't signed a contract, you know, and you want to, uh, there's some people that don't want to be original though, that's the thing, Phil. Like, some people just don't want to, they don't care. They just want to make money, they want to be a superstar DJ, you know. I don't care about that, I just want to make what I like hearing and, you know, hopefully it, it does well for itself. Like, whether or not that happens is a different <laughs> question, isn't it? But, you know, it's like, yeah, it depends what your own mindset is, man. You're only going to be original if you've got original thoughts and you're not trying to do what other people are doing, I suppose. Can I have two pence or? You what? Am I allowed my own two pence uh, or anything? Like, or yeah, yeah, go on, go on, go on. I just think like when I tutor people, I come in and say, when they're first like starting out, I'm like, right, let's, you know, get a sample pack, whatever, let's make a tune quickly, let's get it done the day, let's make it sick when you listen back to it. So yeah, when I tutor people, I tell people, you know, let's get some sample packs, whatever, let, let, let's, let's get a tune out in a day, let's listen to it at the end of the day, rock mm. out in the room, whatever, you know, you'll be really happy that you've done it. But then after you kind of reach that point 
then I think, you know, there's yeah. something inside you that you, where you're like, right, I want to, I want more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, what I'm it is, is one, two, experiment can, more. Yeah. I don't want that sample pack anymore. You know what I mean? Once then you can basically, like, that is how to start. Obviously, everyone starts there. They, they look up to someone and they're like, I wish I could do that, you know, and they try to do it. Once you can actually replicate it yeah. and you know what they're doing and, you know, your tunes are sounding as good as the person you look up to or whatever, you need to start thinking, right, there's two roads I can take now. I can either copy that person for the rest of my life or like copy people or I can take these techniques that I've sat in my bedroom or, you know, paid to go to a studio, taught myself and I can take them and make myself a career by doing things that are different and expanding my own mind and like, yeah, you know, I mean, just, so just, yeah, just trying yeah, different things. Yeah, because all these young producers, uh, you hear music from these days, some of them are incredible. They're like 18. I know. It's like, whoa. I know, man. Like, these guys are like too good. I'm going to have to hold them back. I'm not <laughs> the tunes. But like... Um, just don't answer your like, basically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But like, basically, I just know that like they're learning off YouTube. They're like copying all these techniques. Yeah. But on one day, like, you know, some of them, are, a percentage of them are going to come through and they're going to be like, you know what, I'm, I'm through with that. I want to do something original. And then yeah. they're just going to be like next level. Yeah, exactly, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, Definitely. But I guess only some people maybe find that that day. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. That's the thing, isn't it? It's like, how many, how many of them don't like, don't want to copy? That's it. Mm. I think like looking outside the box as well for sounds is another really yeah. strong way of, of developing different techniques. Strangle a couple of cats, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've got three, man. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly, no, man. I mean, I've, I've been in woods. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I've been in my kitchen. You sent me, yeah, you sent me the yeah, things, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> standing on top of a rabbit hole with a microphone underneath yeah. it and making a kick drum out of it. No, you know? Who a, thinks like that? Who thinks that? Like put, put a microphone into a, into a rabbit hole and it was on a mound. My friend was kicking, stamping on the top of the of the, of the mound and the, 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 you know the microphone picks up a big thud and then you put that into logic EQ it exactly. Out, and it's it's a kick drum that you never yeah. would have ever got. It's my kick drum. Well, and yours, but yeah. I'm calling the RSPCA. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like as I was saying, wait for the sample pack to come out. Like yeah, so what I was saying before is adding a visual element to your mixes is a big thing for me. I don't know if everyone does it. I, I suppose you know, like when you go to get things mastered and stuff, they do it a lot. Um, where is it? Metering, multimeter. So right, you've got this, and you've got a limiter. You got oh, why is it only coming up one? Right, so you've got your EQ. What I'd have is I have two screens at my house, yeah? I have all this kind of stuff on one screen just so I can look and see, you know, what I'm doing, <laughs> what I'm doing wrong, basically. Um, so this would be one thing, so you can see how it looks. And that's the whole tune, so... You know, you can get a rough idea. There's quite a lot of tops. Could do with a little bit more mids and stuff. You know, as long as it looks like kind of nice a landscape. Top, right? Yeah, yeah, if it looks like a bit of a landscape, like a, a hill at the top and then going down, if it's roughly like that, normally it looks, you know, that's good. Things that are limited really hard. Uh, I don't know if it will work definitely on there, but things that are really limited. Uh, Sometimes, what's that? Oh yeah, yeah, right. Okay, yeah. Um, if you if you really limit something hard, it kind of flattens everything out. Can you see that? I know it doesn't sound great, but it's kind of flattening things, um, which is like, you know, that's where you look at some people's mixes and they're literally like a hill going straight down. Still sound great, but they're just limited so hard that there's no. All the dynamics is fake. All the dynamics is just like, it's phantom. It's not really there because you're looking at it and you're looking at the mix and it's just like a line straight down from the top. It's a bit curved at the top and it's straight down. And that's all good, man. But it's like, um, it's a bit... A yeah, yeah? Um, yeah, running out of time now, but we'll take a couple more from uh, the chat room online. Um, Michael asks, um, do you apply processing throughout, like right from the early st stages of building a track, sort of compression and limiting? or do you leave that till a bit later on? Um, it all depends on the sound, to be honest. It's it's something that I definitely have on my buses. I always have some, like, you know, a couple of set rules, like a limiter, um, gains, uh, what else do you, maybe a compressor, maybe a bit of 
there's like a lot of good tape saturation plugins. If you use them on every every bus or whatever, it gives the whole feel, gives the whole track a feel of like analog tape saturation. I suppose if you've got it, every sound going through it. So yeah, there's something I do on buses, but not every sound needs it. So um, I, I can't re I can't really answer that properly. If you know what I mean. Yeah, you do use it all the way through the track. Yeah, definitely. If you need it, not. You don't just have like a set rule that every sound goes in and gets limited and And Prashant Pres asks, um, do you ever use parallel compression to beef up your mix? Yeah, there's a few good parallel compression uh, plugins. There is the ones that's on the same as the Trident um, A range. Can't remember the set of plugins. It's um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The FET compressor is really good for that. Yeah, FET, F-E-T. Um, yeah, that's a wicked compressor. But just one more thing then, if we're running out of time. This is like the thing for the stereo imaging that I was saying. So you can see how stereo your mixes are. and So you can see it's quite stereo. If it's in mono, then... Oh, I don't know if that will work or not, but... Oh, well, everything's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. But yeah, um, all right, well, I'll do it on this, on the... Yeah, yeah, oh, but I don't know if it will do that or not. I'll just do it on this one channel here. Um, where's the break? Right, see the break there? That's with that thing on it as well. So without it, it's not as stereo and mad. So that adds like loads of stereo field. And that makes things stick out in a mix as well. So if you've got something that's not sticking out right, you can mess around with the stereo, f stereo field and there. Uh, you know, make it stick out. Um, what I was saying is, yeah, so that does that. And if it's a mono sound, it'll be straight like a little line. See it? So that's a good way to monitor your stereo field on, on uh, the end of your track. So definitely I would recommend having the, the visual element to it because it's helped me a lot just to understand sound a bit more, you know. Just uh, one final question. Um, yeah. For the rest of the year, what's, what's the plans? What, what are you releasing? Uh, what I've got so far, I've got um, 12 coming out on subtitles, 12, uh, 10 inch vinyl coming out on modulations, remix for Dispatch for Ant TC1. Uh, are you collaborating uh, with anybody? Or uh, I can't really say at the minute, uh, man. Okay. Like, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I've got a, a big remix of a big tune from 2011 as well, but uh, you'll, you'll see. You'll I see look that, forward to that one. Thanks very much for coming, and uh, sorry if it was weak, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs>